Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Number 31 I think And only listen to this or watch this video when you can safely close your eyes because believe me you are going to get very bored during this recording and that's the whole point really it's a superpower that I discovered I had or that I have um, I really came to the conclusion a while back that whenever you know I was talking to people and when I was listening to them talk they were attentive but when I spoke about my life and about what I was up to and my in interests and things like that I noticed that their eyes would glaze over a little bit and more often than not they would yawn and I could just see the boredom on their faces and I suppose to begin with it was I didn't think of it as a special power <laughs> perhaps more as a disability but now as we got older I've realised that maybe I should embrace those things that I am good at or excel at and boring the pants off of people boring people completely is what I am really really good at so I realised that maybe you know, I prefer to be really good at heart surgery or, you know, finding the cures for diseases and, you know, something like that. But my speciality is being tedious. So it's not as, it's not like you listen to me and your brain cells start to die it's not that it's just that your attention starts to decrease your ability to just focus on anything whilst I'm talking reduces to just my voice And then drifting off into real, real boredom is the natural way to go. You kind of end up in a one direction, and by that, I don't mean the band. By, by the way, those that are listening to this in 2060, uh, there was a band called One Direction. It was a really big, big, big band. Massive. Um, at the time, well, not now because they've split up, but at the time they were, I think, the biggest band in the world or the biggest boy group of all time, apparently. Although... 
I do recall New Kids on the Block being pretty, pretty big back in the late 80s. Pretty, pretty huge, in fact. Worldwide, especially in America, they were absolutely big, very, very big, and very popular. Then, of course, there's that. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember. You might not have heard of them, but uh, the Beatles. They were they were quite popular back in their day. Uh, Rolling Stones. So you know. One Direction might not be the most successful boy group or band of all time, but they were hugely, hugely popular. They were, and when they split, um, when they split up, I don't mean they split physically, when they divided or moved away from each other um, professionally, They've all had success, all of them, as far as I know. I would name the ones that have had success, and, but I can't remember their names. I'm, one of them's called Zane. Another one's called Bobby and Horace. And Horatio, no, I don't know. Steve, maybe. I sometimes wonder why more parents don't call their children Jason. It just seems like a really nice name. I mean, I've had it for quite a few years, and I feel quite comfortable telling people my name it feels it just feels like quite a quite a cool name not sure why but yeah I do do think that perhaps more people should call their children Jason and regardless of whether they're, it's a boy or a girl just Jason you know we, we're moving into a into a society where more and more people don't wish to be categorized by the genitals that they were born with. So, you know, it's uh, Jason's a good name for everyone. I don't mean everyone should be called Jason because that would be That'd be complicated, wouldn't it? I suppose. Maybe call some J, some Jace, JC, Jasony. I thought for a girl, maybe Jasony would be quite a nice name. And of course, the middle name needs to be Newland. You know, just so everyone knows. <laughs> or, or the, you know, the child's named after me. You know, it's important because uh, so yeah, just give it a go. It's, they can always change it by deed poll if they want when they're older. Anyway, that wasn't really what I was going to talk about. I can't remember what I was talking about. One Direction. Oh yeah, um, it's hard to believe that I'm boring because I know that sometimes I come across as being really exciting and but mixed in with that pretense of excitement is a, an underlying boringness that may not be obvious at first first but you'll find that what's strange is you find that parts of your body start to get bored and maybe drift off asleep 
not in a way um, the same way that you might wake up and your arms tingly because you've been laying on it or your leg or maybe what I used to do you know when you sit on the toilet for far too long and then you get up and your legs are all pins and needles and it's a really strange feeling um, so I don't mean and we sort of start to say oh my legs fall asleep I don't mean that way I mean just literally it's as if your fingers just get bored and just drift off and your hands and your wrists get bored and drift off and your arms and your shoulders just get bored they just just because you listen to my voice and even though there's not really any content which is the magic that's my superpower being able to talk for an hour or longer even without any content at all unfortunately there's no jobs out there for someone like me to just talk about nothing nobody nobody wants to pay me to do this it's a shame isn't it because I'd say I'm among the best in the world at doing this I'm just talking about absolutely nothing for no logical reason just pointlessly dribbling on and on and on and going back to sitting on the toilet you may think well, why would anyone sit on a toilet for ages well there's a couple of reasons one is well I don't really want to go into details but sometimes it's just good to let everything kind of dry so you can just crumble it off especially if you've only got haven't got enough toilet paper but forgetting that um, if you're reading I used to read books I used to read magazines I mean maybe okay forget the magazines but you know newspapers I'd read while I was on the toilet and I don't know why it just seemed like the right thing to do you know sometimes you just you know, if you find an injured bird or you find a, a little bird that's fallen out of the nest let's say it's not injured but you you pick it up and you put it back in the nest you, you see maybe you get a ladder and you, maybe it's in your garden so you, you've got a ladder handy or maybe you borrow um, the neighbour's ladder or maybe maybe you have it on a chair but it's, you need to be careful with chairs because they just can be wobbly sometimes but you put the bird well I suppose you could buy a ladder for future times as well but you put the, the little tiny little bird Birdling, I don't know, what, little chick. You put it back into the nest because it just feels right. That's what it used to be like for me, reading on the toilet. Just, just felt like the right thing to do. There was no, no real thought went into it. Just felt comfortable. It's a bit like, you know, you've got, you got an itch and you scratch it. And I know that that's not always... It. When you're in public, some people don't like to see people scratching, but... It's like, well, it's okay, I haven't got fleas anymore. You know, it's... Unless you class the eggs 
that are still there as fleas, I don't know. But So the whole point is, we've all got our own little things that we like to do. But you know, nowadays, I don't sit on the toilet. Well, I do sit on the toilet, because, you know, but for obvious reasons, but I don't, I don't, I don't use it as leisure time anymore. Going to the toilet is no longer um, a social activity. You know, I don't, it's not something I plan. I don't have it in my diary. 7.30, have a read on the toilet. No, I don't do that. I don't. I think it's one, it's a strange thing though, because I've noticed with age, as I've got older, because I'm 47 now, I'll be 48 in August, next month in fact. And uh, I know I don't look, I don't look that old, I know. But thanks, thanks for saying that. The thing is, oh, my tummy's just grumbling. But I don't really feel like it's grumbling, it's more liquid is being squeezed through pipes or dripping, not dripping as in dripping on bread. Uh, like goose fat or anything like that, but I mean just like a, a tap. Why do why do you call taps faucets in other countries? We call them taps. Faucet. So is it because you force the water out? Let's force it out. The water's forced out. What should we call this thing that we use to force it out? The water. Force it out. Why would force it? Oh. I don't know why we call them taps. Maybe we used to tap on them. Maybe that was some kind of ritual thing. Maybe maybe in the old days uh, you didn't turn a, a knob to turn the water on. Maybe it was... Oh, you know, some of the old... The old taps, the old, they used to, used to push on them to make the water come out. So maybe that's why they were called taps. I like making up possibilities. It's a bit like going on Wikipedia, but chances are what I'm saying might be true. So it's quite good. You know, some people say, well, Google it. If you want to know something, Google. I actually heard these young girls, well, not yet, I don't know, they're young, they were younger than me anyway. They were, and they were on the bus and they were talking about a friend, saying, oh, she's always asking us questions. She's always asking us stuff. Why doesn't she go on Google? Why doesn't she go on Google? I wasn't sure why she said it twice like that and I started thinking about it because I like to think about important things you know the important questions of life and oh, by the way that's not my back that's the chair I started to think, you know what, if we all went on to Google and Googled all the questions that we have, then doesn't that limit the conversations that we can have with other, other people? You know, you meet someone from, let's say, uh, Portugal or 
Bulgaria. If I meet someone from Bulgaria. And I can't understand how I'm getting on so well with the ladies there. You know, with maybe why I mean maybe I'm in Bulgaria and I you know I can you know, I'm thinking why I keep asking ladies if they'd like to come out with me for a meal or a date and they're all nodding yes and I'm doing really well here. So I might Google why 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 are the ladies in Bulgaria always so friendly and always saying yes to me? Uh, arranging dates but when I turn up at the restaurant they're not there they're not, they never actually show I can't understand it I could google it and I find out that actually in Bulgaria yes is no and no is yes so the way we nod yes in I think most of the world Bulgaria that means no and no you know, when you nod head side to heart side, that means yes. I've no idea how that came about. But it was confusing. Very, very confusing for me. Because I actually was in Bulgaria. And I met this lady, she was working in the hotel that I was staying in. I think I said to her, Did, would you like a drink? And she nodded no. So I stole her shoes and ran off. No, I didn't. I didn't, didn't run off. I just crept away quietly. No, I didn't. Didn't steal her shoes. What am I going to do with shoes I do wear shoes but I'm a size 10 and I've yet to meet a lady that has a size 10 foot and I'm sure there are many out there just I just haven't met any although I was saying that how often do I actually ask somebody what size feet they are it's not the first thing that comes up in a conversation. It's a bit... I don't know if it's a personal thing, but it seems a little bit... a um, bit of an unusual question, really. What size shoe are you? Why do you want to know what size shoe I am? I just want, just wondering what size shoe you are. Well, I'm size five. Well, that's good. So, can you please give me my chips that I paid for? Can I have my burger? You know, it's it's perhaps not the right thing to ask people random questions. I used to have a friend years ago that used to actually say to people, "It'd say, can I ask you four questions, please?" And they just roll off the four questions. And he's really pleased with himself. And it was very funny to watch. And they would all be genuine questions as well. You know, that you wanted answers to. But he couldn't wait. He didn't want to do one answer and get caught up in the conversation. He wanted, you know, he's very specific about the questions that he required answers for. Um, so yeah I quite like that idea in some ways of just getting to to the point I've known people that don't don't seem to have um, the ability to get to the point ever and I know that I'm probably one of those you know when it comes to these recordings that I do because there is no point there is no uh, outcome there is no I'm not building a castle out of Lego there's no flag at the end of it to stick on top you know it's 
is it's just it's like the circle of food you know you eat it and then you let it out and you eat some more and you let that out maybe you ever read a newspaper while you let it out it depends you know maybe you read the newspaper while you eat very likely you'll be eating and letting it letting it out at different times and in different rooms hopefully and sometimes I've found that I've had conversations that have lasted for maybe two hours and it turned out to be the vaguest conversation ever where nothing was actually sorted and the conversation the meeting with that person was to come to a conclusion to a decision about something that was quite important to me that affected me and affected that person I'm being quite vague here as well I know but to come out of it not knowing any more than I knew when I came in it's uh, it's a little bit like having a tapas you know going to a Spanish restaurant and have a tapas a tapas bar or something you have so many different foods that's my, that was my, did you hear that? That was my big toe cracking. I don't worry about that because it's been happening for years and years and years, ever since I was a kid. Because I used to, I used to do karate when I was a kid. I'm coming back to the tapas, don't worry. I might not, yeah, I might not come back to it. The point about the tapas was, and I love tapas, I do. I hope I've got the right word, the right name, tapas. But when I lived in London, I don't think I've... I might have been to one since I moved out of London, but when I was living in London, I used to go to a Spanish restaurant with my cousin, and we used to have tapas, and there'd be so many different... It's, it's like a... The meal was... A combination of sides, side dishes. It was yummy. It was really nice. But remembering what I'd had to eat, because it's so much. It's like I hadn't had a meal yet. I was f had a full tum tum, you know. So I used to do karate back in when I was about. I started that when I was 14, 13, 14, something like that. I did it for a couple of years until I was 16, two or three years. Anyway, I, I went to the doctor because my toes were hurting. And uh, the doctor said, hello. I said, hello. He said, uh, you're all right? I said, no. Why would I come here if I was all right? You're a doctor. I wouldn't, it was not a social visit. I didn't, I didn't come here to invite you to my birthday party. Well, well you know, this, of course I'm not okay. And he said, well, you don't have to be rude, really, do you? still a teenager I said yeah, exactly I'm a teenager that's what teenagers do he said yeah but that's not all teenagers do is it I said well, what would you mean he said well some teenagers do wonderful things you know they learn they you know study they help people they do charity work 
they look after their parents or grandparents some teenagers write books you know it's, teenagers do lots of different things I said well okay so what he's saying is teenagers are basically human beings and he said yeah he gave me a lollipop and I thought wow if only I'd known that getting questions right would result in me getting a lollipop I probably would have made more of an effort to answer questions especially to the doctor I found out later on that actually it's a good idea to tell the doctor everything they need to know because it's easier for them to actually diagnose so I had my toes and I said oh he said what what are you saying oh for I said I'm being dramatic I'm trying to trying to sort of show you but in an emotional way you know that my big toe or both of them actually are painful he said yeah but you could have just said they're painful what well, was with the the sound effects I, I said it's not the doctor it's not really sound effects is it you know I didn't there was no drum sounds there was no you know synthetic you know musical instruments and he said they're true uh, you know I said oh, there's no samples he said well, what do you mean samples he said do you mean like urine samples or blood samples or I said no he said well what samples I said well you know music samples it wasn't you know it wasn't a, I didn't give you a, a music sample he said what's that I said it's something that bands would use they'd, they'd mix it and then put it into to use it as a um, part of a song he said, really? I said, yeah. And he said, oh, I didn't know that. I said, well, yeah, I mean, it's not really why I came here. However, you know, I'm glad you gave me a lollipop, so I'm happy to, to give you something in return. And he said, well, could I choose a different gift? I said, excuse me, well, he said, well, you know, I appreciate, you know, that you gave me that information about the sample in return for the lollipop that I gave you. I was wondering if I could change my gift, if I could return it and ask for something else, and choose something that is a bit more useful to me, some, you know, because I didn't, didn't realise that. Um, this was going to occur and I said well I suppose so I mean I've already told you about the sample stuff you know music and it was kind of the gift is used isn't it really it's uh, you, you know you can't return tampons or Condoms, you know, it's in this. He said, Well, it's not really the same thing, though, is it, Jason? I said, Okay, fair enough, it's not really, is it? No, he said, I mean, he, he said to me, If you'd buy, you'd have given me 10 pounds. Well, firstly, I wouldn't need to use them because I'm male, and I said, Yeah, but to be honest, I don't know what they're for, you know. 15 years old I don't really understand much about tampons all I know is that they're supposed to be funny and you can make them wet and chuck them up 
against the ceiling in the boys' toilets and they stick. But other than that, I don't really know what they're for. My legs are sticking to the chair. I feel a bit like an octopus, but well, but with legs and just human shape. So I suppose the back of my legs being kind of like tentacles sticking to stuff. And he said, why are you talking about octopuses? I said, sorry, that was just, it was an aside. So I said, well, well doctor, what would you like? And he said, first of all, stop calling me doctor. I said, okay. He said, my name's Horace, call me Horace. I said, are you sure? He said, of course I'm sure what my name is. I said, I don't, I don't mean that. I mean, are you sure you're okay? Well, don't worry. And so what, what would you like then? Instead of the me telling you about the sample. And he said, I, I quite like a car like a Jaguar or something like that. I said, what? That, that, I'm 15 years old, where am I gonna get a Jaguar from? I mean, I could, I've got no money. I'd find it easier to get you a Jaguar from the zoo than to get you an actual, you know, car version of that particular name and he said well okay then and I thought well, well I said to him what well, you seem upset did you, did you really believe that I was going to be able to come up with 60 70 thousand pounds whatever it would be cost to get you a Jaguar and he said, come on, it wouldn't cost that much. It doesn't have to be a new one. I said, that's not really the point. It's, you know, I've got a paper round and I get paid like two pound or three pound a week. And he said, okay. I said, you know what though, Dr. Horace? He said, what's that? And while we're here, how about you look at my toes? He said, yeah, okay then. So, I took my socks off. I put the rest of my clothes back on. And I just said, he said, we st can you stand on your toes? And I said, I could do lots of things. He said, no, but specifically the toes. I said, oh, well, yeah. But I said, and my, that just as then my, my toes clicked. I, I, he said, does it hurt when you stand on your toes? I said, yeah. He said, well, maybe you shouldn't do it then. I said, that's that's an old joke and that was that was uh, Ronnie Barker did that in Porridge and he said well no he didn't do it exactly like that he he said uh, that's more an elbow thing wasn't it he's can't my elbow hurts I can't do this with it and then he moved the elbow that was hurting in a way that he was trying to explain he, that he couldn't move it I said, okay, so back to my toes, and the doctor said, uh, you know what you got there? And he, and he was laughing. Well, he wasn't like laughing out loud, not hysterically, because that would have been, I suppose it would have been slightly 
disturbing really especially after we'd had such a normal conversation and he said uh, what you have there Jason is something that we call in the medical society we call it ballerina toes I said what what do you mean I've got ballerina toes he said yeah you've got ballerina's toes I said well, firstly I don't do ballet so how can I have ballerina toes he says well it's the same problem that ballerinas have is when you use your toes a lot with karate you're jumping up and down using your feet uh, standing on your tiptoes pulling your toes back when you're kicking all that stuff well, that causes strain on the ligaments and the joints of your toes which then causes the discomfort that you've been experiencing I said you know what Dr Horace he said what's that patient Jason I said that actually makes sense it really does make sense because we, I do spend a lot of time jumping up and down on my toes and more so than I did before I, I was jumping up and down on my toes because before I, I didn't do that I didn't have any problems with my toes but now that I do jump and up and down on them they kind of creak like a like a rusty spine you know it's very very creaky that's another one just gone it's only the big toes that do it the, the toes are never really they're not, I say recovered but because I've done other martial arts you know over the years plus boxing and things so there's always been periods of activity where I've been using my feet and kicking and jumping around on my toes and I thought that would have loosened the joints and the ligaments and stretched everything but But it's not so bad. Just let you know there might be background sounds. That's what I heard. Someone in a distance that may knock on my door, but I won't answer it because I can't. Because I'm doing this. Oh, squeaky, squeaky. Because I'm only 43 minutes in, I can't let you down and stop before the hour. Because it's good to talk about nothing for as long as possible. Which is what I'm doing. And sometimes I will talk about things that maybe have happened and other times I may just make everything up just for the sake of it and other, other times I might actually focus completely on the different parts of your body that feel now much more relaxed than they did before you press the play button on this audio or video so whether you're listening on SoundCloud or iTunes 
Spreaker, Anchor, Podchaser. It's a weird name, isn't it? Podchaser. Like chasing a podcast. Or if you're watching on YouTube, my YouTube channel. What's my YouTube channel name? I think it's Jason Newlands Free Hypnosis Service. I think, I think that's what it's called. I've been uploading the old archived videos from the past. Of course, archived means I think, doesn't it, from the past or? I think there's about. Uh, I'm boring myself. I think there's about 383 videos now uploaded on my YouTube channel. And I've been also making new sessions a bit more regularly as well. Always doing the hypnotic buffet on Mondays and maybe doing a couple of let me bore you to sleep sessions a week. And also this morning, or this afternoon, I did a deep sleep whisper hypnosis ASMR number four. And that was about 24 minutes of me whispering. So, you know, it's, I'm going to be uploading the sleep, what is it, relaxation course I did for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. And it's 34 videos, most of them are fairly long, so I'll be uploading those. I uploaded one today, but I think it was like 3.4 gigabytes, so it's quite a lot of uh, space to take up, but it's on YouTube, so it's fine. So I'm going to be uploading the other 33, well, over the next couple of days I'll upload, I'll try and upload maybe 10 or 15 overnight, well, you know, when I'm asleep, I think. So that's good. I'm still working on the website. That's another place you might decide to find what I do on jasonnewland.com. All my stuff's on there. I'm still still in the process of categorizing the different things that I've got available, but it's coming together quite nicely. And I'm fairly pleased. And every day I'm moving closer to making more of my stuff available free for you to watch, to download or to stream. So you can download the MP3, you can stream the audio or you can watch the video. See, it's all coming together piece by piece. I like the word peace. I'm feeling quite peaceful tonight. I'm also feeling a bit hungry. So I might be having something to eat. I will be when I finish this I'm going to I might cook myself a pizza yeah that's something that I might do it's just the 
it's the time it takes. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't take a long time to actually cook the pizza because it's cooked from frozen and it takes about 13 minutes. But it's heating the oven up. And until recently, I was always following the instructions and having the oven on it like maybe 180 degrees by I kind of sussed out and remembered that the ovens in pizza places pizza parlors or pizza shops like Domino's or wherever their, their ovens are really 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 high so I decided to start doing that and I put my oven on the highest it can be and I put the pizza in for about 13 minutes and it comes out pretty much perfect crunchy not burnt but you know everything fairly how it, it should be or how I like it to be I probably could get it out at 12 minutes maybe 12 and a half it's, it's a judgement you know I think the main thing is that it's edible because I've made pizzas in the past or I've cooked pizzas in the past that I just couldn't eat they were just burnt or too you know too chewy or you know, you could use them as a discus or a frisbee, a weird frisbee, but because they're circular and flat. Or there's a, I suppose, a spaceship, but you, I mean, you couldn't use it as a spaceship because there's no engine inside. So that wouldn't really be practical, but imagine if you were tiny and you had the ability to build a spaceship with the outside of it looking like a pizza, then that's, you know, I suppose that could work, but I don't know how. To be honest, it's not something I've really given much thought to. I wonder how your mind is. Is your mind just seems to close down? Enjoying the quiet. Just allowing yourself to feel peaceful. struggling not to just fall asleep myself. The more sleepy that I get, the more 
I just won't close my eyes and let go. Enjoy freedom. A feeling relaxed, not just in your body. Also in your mind, and that's a nice feeling. To not have to do anything. It's a really lovely feeling. Just enjoy being you now. my chair squeaks a little bit more and I pick up my glasses and I put them on my face and I realise that I don't need to wear my glasses when my eyes are closed but I can't be bothered to take them off again besides nothing really matters feel completely peaceful even cars in the background difference to how comfortable and relaxed body and mind feel 
so completely to the end of this recording and I honestly can't be bothered to push the stop button because that will involve lifting my hand and even Andre sneezing and running over behind my chair and just done which would involve me possibly needing to open a window because I gave him some chocolate milk earlier today and I shouldn't have done that time. Bye.